This is another video um, talking about the option explicit statement and the whole idea of declaring variables. Plus, there's some other things in this program uh, that I'd like to just sort of talk about so we could explain. So I'm just going to actually walk through the program first, and then we'll take a look at what happens when I try to run it. So uh, you'll notice that we have an assignment uh, statement right here. This, this first statement is doing assignment. Um, and essentially, what we're doing is we're taking this this literal string right here, this is your name, and then we're taking this kind of strange thing that we see here, um, and we're concatenating that all together with this question mark. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk briefly about this. What this is, is this is a, a kind of a first example of using a built-in object in the Excel Visual Basic environment. Um, actually, this particular built-in object would be available in Word and PowerPoint and so on, but the idea here is that we have an application object, and it's available to you automatically. You don't have to do anything special to get this. And that application object has various attributes, and we refer to the attributes by using a dot notation. They call this the dot notation because of the dot you see right there after the object name. So we have this application object, and it has an attribute called username. So we should be able to retrieve that value from memory. You can think of this very much like a variable, if you will, because it has a value. And so when we say application.username, it retrieves that value from the computer's memory. So we're concatenating all these together, and we're putting them into this left-hand side variable here, msg. Now you'll also notice the next line down, of course, something a little bit different is going on. Here again, we have another assignment statement going on because we see the use of the assignment uh, operation right here. So that means we have a left-hand side variable. Again, anything on the left-hand side has got to be a variable because if it's on the left-hand side, it means we're doing a storage. We're actually storing something into memory whenever you see it on the left-hand side like that. And this next thing is a little bit different. This is the message box used as a value. Now that's kind of confusing because we've never used the message box that way before. You'll notice down here, here's, here's another example just below of the message box. And here it's not being used as a value. It's actually being used just to execute a command and print something on the screen. So what this message box is going to do is it's going to print something on the screen. But also, the user is going to click a button and that value of that button, which button they click, is going to be returned and stored into this variable. So if we take a look at this, we notice then that the message box is going to put this prompt on the screen, the message variable. Therefore, it's going to retrieve all this stuff that was stored in that variable from memory. It's going to retrieve that and put it on the screen. And then it's going to put a yes, no pair of buttons on that dialog box. And now, this particular value is built into Visual Basic. It's almost impossible to remember all these things, so there are some kind of tricky ways to, to help get these. Let me just show you how that works. If, if I'm typing the message box like I am here, and then I type a comma, you'll notice that it pops up all the available options that I can actually use here. And we wanted the VB yes, no. So if we scroll down here, we can find the VB yes, no in this pick list. They call this pop-up list a pick list. So I can just click on that pick list here, actually double click, and it puts the VB yes, no right in there. And you'll notice that there are other things that I can actually include inside these parentheses, but this is all I want right now. The other items, you'll notice they have square brackets around them. You see the square brackets here? Well, those square brackets mean that those are all optional. You'll also notice that this particular, this is actually called a function, this message box function, because a function returns a value. You've got to write that down in your notes. A function returns a value. And the value it's going to return is this VB message box result. That's one of the kinds of values that we're going to get back. So it's going to return a result. So the message box statement puts this message on the screen, two buttons, yes and no. User clicks one of those two buttons, and then the value is stored here. Now the next thing you see here is an if statement. An if statement is something we're going to spend quite a bit more time on shortly. And essentially it lets us ask a question in our program. So we can find out what just happened. See, we don't know what button the user clicked. We don't know if they clicked the yes button or the no button. Well, this if statement lets us find out which one they've clicked. So essentially what we're doing is we're asking a question right here. So we're saying if the answer is equal to VB no, VB no is another one of those built-in values that's in Visual Basic. And again, these things are hard to remember, so I usually wind up looking these things up. 
and we'll talk more about how to find things like this. But anyway, if the answer is equal to VB no. Now, there's something a little bit different going on here, though, and that is this is not an assignment. This is equality. This is a check to see if those two values are different. So this is a little confusing because in this case up here where we had the equals symbol, this is an assignment statement. In this case where we have the equals symbol, this is simply a comparison between those two values, the one on the left and the one on the right. We're just comparing to see if they're equal or not. If they are equal, then that will be true. So basically what this says is if this is true, then say message box Never mind. In other words, if the user answered no, if they click the no button, that's what that VB no constant is, then it'll execute this portion of code. If this is not true, if this is false, in other words, if the user answered yes, this test would be false. And if that's the case, it falls into the else block here. And the else block has a single statement that prints out this message. And then this is the end if. Now, just a couple things about an is if then else. This is the way you ought to do all your if then elses. Now, the else portion here, we could have left that out completely. That's t completely optional. But we wanted to have both sides of this. We wanted to have the side where, yeah, they answered a no, and we print that box. And also the side where, oh no, they answered yes, and we want that box. So, keywords here if then else and if. Those are all keywords. We have to type them just the way you see. And then we can put a block of code here between uh, right after the then statement, between the then statement and the else. We can put a block of code there. In this case, we just have a single statement. And then we can put a block of code, whoopsie, we can put a block of code here between the else and the end if. Only one of these two blocks of code will ever execute. If this block of code executes, then that's the only thing that executes, and it jumps down here to the end if. If this block of code executes, of course, it's skipped over the first block, and then it hits the end if, and we're finished executing the end if statement. So this program, then, is going to prompt the user for whether or not this is their name. The user is going to click yes, no. And then the program is going to do, do something based on which button they click. So I'm going to go ahead and run this program. We'll just see what happens. So I click the Start button. And it says Variable Not Defined. And immediately it highlights the MSG variable. Well, now let's go take a look at what's going on here. You'll notice, of course, that at the very top of our program, I told you you always want to have that option explicit because the option explicit will help you find errors in your program. Well, in this particular case, the option explicit statement is saying you have to declare your variables. Well, we have two variables in this program. And do you see a declaration for either of these two variables anywhere? Of course, you do not see the dim statement. So let's go ahead and add the dim statement. So I'll say dim msg as, and it looks like this needs to be a string because we're actually concatenating all these strings together here. So now I'm going to go ahead and reset the program. And I'm going to run it again. I get another error, of course, and that is I have this second variable that I didn't declare. So I need to declare both my variables, of course, because option explicit says you have to declare them all. Well, now, this is a little trickier because we don't know exactly what kind of variable this is because it's hard to tell from this statement. Well, I'll tell you right now that this message box is going to return a small number, you know, something in the range of, I don't know, 1 to 100. So I'm going to declare that variable as an integer, A-N-S, as integer. Integers are small numbers. They cannot get any bigger than 32,000. So now we've got both of these declared. Let's actually reset the program again by hitting the reset button. And now we'll run it again and see what happens. Is your name Peter Casey? Well, look at that. They picked up my name automatically. Now that's a miracle. And I'll say yes. And it says, ooh, I must be clairvoyant, just like we thought. Now let me run it one more time, but I'll say no. I'll run it again. I'll say no. It says, oh, never mind. So it's running the two sides of that if-then-else statement. So that's what that program does, and that's why it won't run if we don't declare these two variables, because of the use of the option explicit. Now, this is a good thing. And again, the author of your book does not always use the option explicit, and I think that was a mistake. You should always use it.